Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. It is May the 6th, 2024. We're getting closer to one of the bigger fights of our time, a heavyweight unification fight. Understand we have not had a unified heavyweight champion since a guy named Lennox Lewis had that designation. Let's talk about Tyson Fury, unbeaten, against Alexander Usyk, unbeaten. I'm not going to give a winner here, I'm just going to talk styles. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, I understand there is a Derek Chisora crowd out there. An argument can be made that Derek Chisora gave Alexander Usyk his best fight at heavyweight. Right, let's get past the names, let's get past the hype. Who roughed up Usyk the most? I would say from the opening bell, it was Derek Chisora at heavyweight. But in my favorites folder right now, you have a blueprint fight. Right? It's the early rounds of unbeaten Maris Breedis, the guy who is scheduled to fight Jay Opatia next, right, against Alexander Usyk. Folks, that's the fight to look at in researching Usyk against Fury. Let me just say a few points here. <clears throat> Breedis comes out You'll notice that Breedis in the early rounds is having success with a punch you would not expect. He's having success against Usyk throwing a left hook up top. Understand, Breedis is right-handed. Right? He's throwing a left hook up top. <clears throat> Fury has an excellent jab. But Fury might want to hook it, quite frankly, because... In those opening rounds, Usyk has problems with it. You notice, too, Breedis feels that the punch is doing something because he keeps throwing it. In fact, Breedis looks better than Usyk does in the early rounds. But then there are a few revelations in that fight. And let me point out, that fight is one of those gift fights where you're looking at it, the fighters are ready, you look at the referee, it's the great Kenny Bayless. Let's just say everything came together for that fight. Now you'll notice against Maris Breedis, who's a knockout puncher, Breedis finishes guys. Folks, he's a closer. You'll notice that Alexander Usyk is hanging around the pocket. Folks, he's not moving away. I need for people thinking about this heavyweight unification fight to just consider the possibility that both guys go looking for each other. You're fighting a 6'9 guy with a jab and movement. You don't want to be on the outside of that. Usyk has the skill level to be in the pocket for the majority of the fight against Maris Breedis. I see no reason why he doesn't try to stay in the pocket against Tyson Fury, right? Understand, it's not so much the size of the man in the fight, it's the size of the fight in the man, right? Now, Tyson Fury has been able to come in and lean on guys during fights, right? The Wilder last fight. I thought was vintage, where he's hurt and he finds a way to lean on Wilder's shoulder, smother Wilder, right? The Otto Wallen fight, he's cut, he's bleeding, he hasn't had success on the outside against Wallen. So Tyson Fury comes in and leans on Otto Wallen, right? Have you seen him, though, legally? So that rules out the Cunningham fight. Have you seen him legally lean on a mover 
I believe that Usyk believes that there's a scenario by which he gets close to Fury who tries to lean on him and moves just enough where the coordination gap in the fight actually makes a difference. Now, if you don't believe Usyk has inside the pocket skills, if you view him as primarily a mover, please look at the Maris Breedis film. Folks, he's in the pocket. He is trading with someone you don't want to be in the pocket with. You'll notice another interesting thing from that Breedis film. While Breedis starts better than Usyk, in my opinion, and while the fight is in Breedis' backyard, Usyk gets progressively better as the fight goes forward. Now, let me just say, this fight took place before the infamous Daniel Dubois stomach punch fight. I believe fighters looking at that Dubois stomach punch, right? And it's not just the stomach punch that knocks Usyk down. It's when Usyk gets off the canvas, gets hit with a few more body shots, and looks like he doesn't know where the punches are landing. He looks confused. At one point, he turns to the referee to complain about a shot that's clearly legal. Right now, in the Breedis fight, it's interesting because Breedis does land some good shots with his right hand. But it's not a focus of his. I think Tyson Fury is going to try to shorten the distance between the two guys. And I think Fury is going to make it a point to try to go to the body of Alexander Usyk. Now what you notice in the Maris Breedis fight, and Breedis is a guy who broke Jake Obatai's draw the first fight around, right? He's rough and tumble. At one point in the Usyk fight, he spins Usyk around and throws him to the canvas, right? This is your rough and tumble fighter. But you'll notice that he starts respecting Usyk's power. You'll notice several times at the end of engagements, Usyk's the one who gets the last punch. Sometimes it's a straight left, right? Usyk's a southpaw. So this fight, Against Tyson Fury, folks, I'm not expecting either guy to run. <clears throat> I'm expecting a dust-up. I think Usyk, the cruiserweight, believes he's faster-handed than Tyson Fury, and I think he's right. More importantly, I think he thinks he fights better on the inside than Tyson Fury. Right, as in the Maris Breedis fight, he's going to take a couple rounds off at the very beginning. He's a slow starter, he'll get the lay of the land. But then understand, he's going to up the tempo. He's going to come inside. He's going to move just enough where Tyson Fury can't lean on him. He's slick enough <clears throat> where even elite fighters can't clinch him. Right, so I'm expecting a much faster paced fight than either of his fights against Anthony Joshua, who, compared to these two, is tentative. Right, Usyk almost wins those fights by default. Right, because Joshua is tentative, doesn't let his hands go. I believe Fury's going to have to let his hands go. Because I believe he's going to have a smaller guy with faster hands who's pushing the issue from in the pocket. Right? So, please, <clears throat> whatever you do, if you want to see the toughest opponent against Alexander Usyk, and let's throw out the amateurs, right? Enough of these three, three round fights. Let's throw out the amateurs. Let's think in terms of a pro fight. 12 rounds. A guy who's in there in the pocket who's trying to throw big shots. He's certainly trying to land that left hook up top. Please take a look 
at this Maris Breedis fight against Usyk. That's the best pro opponent against Usyk in terms of pushing him, right? I've mentioned this before. I have no idea what Maris Breedis is doing still hanging around cruiserweight, right? Maris Breedis would give a lot of heavyweights serious problems, right? Tough opponent, very tough opponent, right in front of Usyk. Usyk's right in front of him. And the big shocker in the fight is against a puncher in Maris Breedis, Usyk is throwing the heavier volume. Expect a lot of volume, and I mean a lot of volume, in this Tyson Fury fight. Understand, Fury is a guy who, against big guys, tends to be more fluid, right? He wins the Vladimir Klitschko fight really by default, doesn't he? Right? Because Klitschko's not the athlete that Tyson Fury is. And Fury can just stand there and outmaneuver them. He's not going to have that option against Alexander Usyk. Let me just say, too, that the line on this fight tells the whole story. Usyk was a sizable underdog when the line opened. Folks, he's the favorite right now. Right? Understand. Gamblers have seen enough. Part of it is Francis Ngannou. Gamblers have seen enough to dare ask the question. Usyk, who's been undisputed at cruiser, is he the best fighter at heavyweight? Well, gamblers are telling you he's at least as good as Tyson Fury right now in their minds. Right? So Fury gave an interview where Fury said, this isn't going to be a size fight. Size isn't going to matter that much. Now, you have to ask yourself, what does that mean? Is he bluffing here? Is this a Jermaine Ortiz situation where Ortiz was interviewed for his fight against Teofimo Lopez and he didn't want to tip his hand, he didn't want to reveal his strategy, right? He told the people interviewing him some false story about a strategy he wasn't going to pursue. This is Tyson Fury trying not to tip his head, right? Maybe he plans to be on his back foot, but he's not going to tell us about it. Or is this Tyson Fury who realizes, hey, my best shot here is to trade shots with Alexander Usyk, right? This guy's not going to linger around the ropes like he did against Derek Chisora, right? No, he's going to try to bait and switch me look like he's in distress along the ropes then when i come over there he's going to find himself in the pocket where he wants to be right the key punch for Usyk is that straight left right look at the end of the tony bell you fight right for tyson fury we're going to have to figure it out Right? I believe what Fury needs to think about doing is hooking with his lead left. Not throwing a jab, but hooking. Right, If he can convince the southpaw to move a little bit to the right, then he needs to throw a straight right hand right down Main Street. Right, But understand, I don't believe either of these guys is coming into the fight hoping for a decision. One may happen, right? I've been burned the last couple of fights I've been on here, right? One may happen, right? But I get the feeling, and the Maris Breedis fight goes the distance, right? But let's remember, Usyk did stop Daniel Dubois. I know the Francis Ngannou fight went the distance. Let's remember, Fury did stop Billy and White, right? I'm expecting... Fury somewhere along the line to test Usyk's body. I'm expecting Fury also to be high risk, right? And a throw left hooks up top. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours, please. Take a look at the video. It's the best fight against Usyk I know of. If you know of a better one, put it in the comment section here. It's Maris Breedis. 
against Oleksandr Usyk. The highlights are in my YouTube favorites folder. I look forward to your comments. Thanks for stopping by.